Hello, everybody. This is Daryl Arnold, and I'm the host of Power Talks, and it will be premiering on Preach the Word Network on Wednesdays, 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So if you want to be interviewed or if you have a business idea or if you even have commercials or something like that, get at me so we can get you on all right, this show and make sure that we can give you some power and give the people that surround you the power that you have inside you. Let's get it. Love, peace. Hit me up on all my DMs and I'm I'm gladly to hit, uh, get back at you. All right, let's get it. Welcome back to another episode of Power Talks with DA. I have a special guest for y'all today. I really wanted to get into a uh, dive real deep into this conversation about financial education, about so many different things that's elements that's really plaguing us because we don't understand this information. So I brought my brother, uh, my guy that's been in the business for three or four years. He's a uh, marketing director. He's actually a Forex trader as well. So he does a lot of good things. Um, he's from Milwaukee. I've been knowing him for uh, five plus years from the Drew League, everything else. Um, now I've just seen him transform as a businessman, as a financial professional, and all that above. So, no other than do my brother Donna Lucius. How you doing, brother? How are you? Good, good, good. I'm good. Thank you for having me on here, man. How you doing? Man, good, man. I love, man. I just been loving your energy and everything that you've been bringing, man. I thank you for bringing me into the financial industry and everything, man. So I just had to have you on my show and um, really dive into, uh, you know, financial education, because I think this is something, uh, this episode will really help out a lot of people. And um, I definitely wanted them to, hey, know who started me and got me on my journey. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a privilege to actually have someone that, you know, we we played ball with, we, we grind in that area with, and we knew what we, it took to actually be successful in that area. So for me to actually bring you a part of this and have you, you know, build something for yourself and us to work together to build something, I mean, it's, it, it, it works. I love it. Yeah, man. So uh, I just want to know, how did you get into the financial sector, man? What, what happened? Man, you know, you know, back then, we how we met, we met through basketball. Back then, I was playing basketball, went overseas for a few years, enjoyed myself, um, loved the experience that it gave me, the uh, culture difference it gave me, the understanding of just life and things like that. But besides that, you know, earning the money, coming back home, partying, you know, um, living that, that basketball player life, as you want to call it. Um, lost a lot of money for me. And it got me to a point to where I was dependent on going back over uh, seas to play ball every year because I had to get that money back what I blew. And after every year, didn't learn my lesson. Finally, I, I believe, you know, um, the world, the universe, the, you know, God, Allah, whatever you, uh, you believe into, um, it showed me a sign of where it's like, okay, look, we bless you with this gift, but you're not really using it to your full ability of where you're supposed to be. And, you know, basketball didn't come around as often anymore as far as um, contracts and things like that. So I kind of was stuck. And the thing that really struck me the most when I kind of stopped playing basketball was the money that I lost. I didn't learn any type of financial skills with it. I didn't learn anything. The only thing I knew what to do is put my money in the bank so I can get, it, get a hold to it and spend it. That was the only thing I knew about. So that was really what made me really push myself. And I think when I seen the opportunity to get in the financial industry, that's when I took it because I already was thinking like, hey, I'm bad with money. I don't want to keep living like this. I don't want to work the rest of my life. So that's when I actually, you know, got into the financial industry. Man, that's powerful. I think a lot of times uh, as athletes, we go through that uh, that sector and we, you know, we just say ball is life and we don't think anything else uh, besides that. All we think about is like, you know, basketball is going to kind of take care of the money that's going to come in. But then we never think about all the professional athletes that we know personally are of afar that has been broke because they didn't know how to manage their money. I don't care if you have a tr uh, trillion million dollars, but if you don't know how to <laughs> manage your money, you know, it, it can, it can, uh, it can really 
defer you and really can put you in a bad situation. I mean, because regardless, uh, I mean, you can't live this high lifestyle that you've been living for so long. And then if you ain't playing no basketball, you ain't got that high money coming in. How can you kind of keep on playing with the Joneses? And that's what a lot of times it happens to us, man, that black, where black people are as an athlete, if you will. So, yeah, I'm glad that you uh, got into the financial industry. So can you just tell us about, uh, you know, what was the conversation uh, like? Um, did you kind of, you know, what kind of the things that you, uh, what were some uh, obstacles that you went through when you first started? Well, um, the biggest obstacles I went through, honestly, is just the fact that, you know, changing Losing the identity of who you thought you were. Mm. And that was one of the biggest things that I had a problem with is losing my identity. And what I mean by identity is the fact that we get so, we get so caught up in who we think we are through the achievements, through just the, the, the career title we have and all those type of things, we get caught up into actually identifying ourselves with that. So when something like that or one of those things has taken away from us, we lose who we are, you know, and this career, this industry literally showed me, like, it showed me the fact that my problem wasn't surface, it was rooted. And for me to actually have to be successful in the financial industry, not only just as far as learning about money, but also wanting to teach one, someone about money, wanting to actually to, to build a life or a career around financial, uh, the financial industry, it really had to, I really had to go to my roots and figure out what was the problem and what was the issue for me to actually go ahead and, you know, be successful. Wow, that's uh, that's powerful, man. You uh, dropping some gems on us <laughs> today. So uh, who inspires you to become who you becoming right now? Man, who inspired me to become who I am today? You know, it's funny because, you know, growing up, watching basketball all my life, playing ball all my life, obviously it was, you know, I guess what I seen basketball players, you know, the culture, what our culture bonded around is basketball players, rappers, things like that. So when I got into this industry, who inspired me to be who I, I am? Honestly, and it's funny, is I want to give a lot to uh, the late passing of our Nipsey Hussle, our great King Nipsey Hussle. Um, he definitely opened up you know, even though, you know, he was in his own lane as far as how his lifestyle was and things like that, he opened up my mind to where it's like, hey, he came from that lifestyle. Yes, but he's into a business lane now. Might he don't he might not have suits and and he I might not rap and things like that, but he was able to open doors in the business lane, in a business field, in a in that type of industry, just as far as off his smarts and off his his character and, and who he was. So for me, I would like to say it was Nipsey Hussle. You know, uh, I would like to give a lot to Jay-Z too. You know, we grew up on Jay-Z, um, but obviously Jay-Z been around. So that a lot of my changing had to do with um, Nipsey Hussle for sure. Wow, that's a, that's a, that just shows you how impactful music or just uh, entertainers can be to someone. And I think sometimes we kind of overlook that and overshadow uh, that, that remark that, Hey, some people, you know, some people can actually uh, transform your life by just actually listening to them and everything else. So that's why it's up to us to be a positive role models to uh, the up and coming youth or the upcoming generation. I'm glad that you uh, pinpointed that. So when you're talking to clients, how do you present this information to them in a way that they can understand it? Wow. Um, honestly, for one, I have to understand. Just like I told you before, I didn't have a background in the financial industry. So I have to put myself into a position and say, okay, if I was sitting in front of, if someone was sitting in front of me and they were trying to get, deliver some information, what is a way that I will honestly understand or how would I want to receive that information from them or how would I want them to present that information for me so for me it's not as far as how I present or how what angle do I, I want to see the type of person that I'm presenting it to because once I understand who you are how your mind works how do you feel about certain things I can show you a presentation and form it into something that you understand that will help you benefit you 
Because if I come in and just give a presentation all about numbers to somebody that doesn't understand numbers, it doesn't work. So for me, it's more about forming a presentation around that client and how they want to proceed or how they perceive information. Man, that's powerful. I think a lot of times when we're talking about financial uh, mentors or financial gurus or whatnot, they just kind of tell you what you should be doing instead of giving you options or things that you can actually learn for yourself. And I'm glad that we in this business together, that we can actually show people these are the options and actually teach you some of these basic principles that you need to actually survive and actually have a better life. So, yeah, I'm glad that you're talking about that. <laughs> So uh, what was your upbringing like? So I know you're from Milwaukee. So tell the people at home, like, uh, where are you from? Um, how was that? Um, and how did this kind of, uh, how did that environment kind of prepare you for your life? Well, um, upbringing, um, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, you know, it's funny because when you say Wisconsin, first thing people think about is cheese. They, that's the first thing to say, cheese. And it's funny because it's like, once you get in Milwaukee, you will see it's a, it's a totally different, totally different culture. Meaning the fact that honestly, Milwaukee is the low, um, one of the top five and as far as uh, murder rates, one of the top five in poverty along uh, African-Americans, um, just low employment uh, rates, uh, high un unemployment rates, just across the board, a lot of this, this just har disheartening things to see. Um, as I, I me growing up there, you know, my mom was hardworking. You know, I had a stepfather who was in a household up until I was a good 11 years old. Um, but my mom was majority of who I basically, you know, um, was raised by. Um, hardworking woman, always stayed on her toes. Um, it wasn't easy for her because I didn't make things easy for her. I'm not going to be honest. I wasn't the perfect child. Went through a lot of different things. Uh, and a good thing, um, I went through things of my life that that shaped me to my mindset now, you know, um, as much as I say I went overseas, you know, uh, I've been in trouble with the law before, um, a lot of different things of, of that nature, but I understood the fact that I saw, when I started to understand that it was the environment that I put myself around and the people that I was really putting myself around and just the choices I was making, that's when things start changing and that's when things start uh, getting better for me. But Milwaukee, Milwaukee de definitely did uh, shape me. You know, it's uh, de definitely highly segregated. I actually grew up and went to a private high school with a predominantly white high school. So I was dealing with a lot of uh, racist things there. Um, coming home, dealing with the inner city of poverty, things like that, with, um, you know, grew up in a household sometimes life got cut off you know sometimes hit the move things like that but i think everything that i've been through in my life shaped me for the things that i want in the future meaning the fact that for me to grow to that next level you know you come up against tests and a lot of those tests we look at as uh, losses but they're not losses there's tests as far as the growth that we want to get to because if you can pass that test of your mind uh um being defeated or whatever have issues that you're having and you can press through that i think that's the next level of where you're trying to get to to have more blessings come to you so i think again everything i went through as far as milwaukee was a test um i i, I feel like i passed those tests because i'm here now uh talking to you um having a great fr friendship brotherly friendship with you, you know so yeah that was pretty much milwaukee for me that's a uh, that's good. I'm glad you uh, pinpointed that as well. I think that uh, exposure. Um, I know we uh, they talk about this all the time, but exposure. Um, you just don't know what you don't know. So if you have exposure to entrepreneurship uh, classes, or you have people that's in your corner, or if you just have somebody or something to do, then you have that exposure to that. Then you like, okay, yeah, I can actually do this. I think uh, it's a lot of a lot of times we just don't have the exposure uh, to this. That's why a lot of times in this in this climate that we have now, over 80% of people living paycheck to paycheck because they don't understand this or they don't have the exposure to this type of information. Or sometimes they may not even want to listen to the information because how it's uh, being sought out. Um, a lot of life assurance uh, people, they kind of just call you now and just be like, you want a free quote? And it's just like, huh? It's no interpersonal uh, you know, in connection. 
So where is the connection any, uh, anymore? So I think, you know, with us being in the grad, I mean, in this field, we can actually touch and uh, teach people about this information, which is uh, something that I love. And I'm glad that we're talking about discussing this in a uh, holistic uh, approach, you know. So I got another question. So how important is financial education to you? Well, as you see, as I told you before, I completely went broke after my uh, basketball season. So I think it's very important because honestly, me growing up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, um, coming home to the inner city, going to a um, private school, seeing how they live, seeing what their parents is doing, seeing everything they were actually access, uh, will, uh, have access to, and then coming back home, watching my mom struggle, watching my mom work three jobs, me starting to work at an early age, 13, uh, by the age of 14, having two jobs and going, going to high school. Like for me, it's, it's very, very important because a lot of people don't understand the way taxes work. The fact that you can beat taxes even if you're working. Um, the fact that if you have a small business and uh, you can beat taxes that way, it's just so much importance of financial literacy. Um, a lot of people don't understand the fact that it's important to have three to six months as an emergency uh, funds as far as your finances. You know, I always give a, a, a example to my clients. And the example is, you know, if you spend $27.12 every day for a whole year, at the end of that year, that's almost $10,000. Now, let that sit in, sink again again. I'm sorry if that, that's my email. Sorry if you hear it. But if you spend $27.12 every day for a whole year, that's literally 10 k you have spent in that year. Now, what could that 10 k actually have done for you if you would save that $27.12? So those are the things that I think that we don't understand. Also, the rule of 72, you know, we, we talk, we, um, it, our school doesn't, the system doesn't teach us those things about credit or anything. So financial literacy is definitely important for sure. Yeah, so what are some terms that you think that the audience need to know? Just if if you're adults or even uh, kids, what are some financial terms that you feel like everybody should know? What are some, some glossaries that like, hey, this is what you need to be understanding. These are just some basics. You don't have to go to the to the real deal because we know it can be complicated, but what are some, some just some basic things that they need to know? For one, I would love to start off with. I think everyone should honestly know the four different types of insurances. I think that's very, very highly important because the, these four insurances, these are foundations that people need to build before they call themselves investors. Just like a house, you don't build a house uh, from the top down. You just don't do that. You build it from the foundation and up. So just like your finances, you should treat your finances just like you should treat a house. And those foundations are the four type of insurances. Now, again, four different type of insurances. I'll give some terms. Uh, one of them is term life insurance. The second one is whole life. You have uh, universal life. And also you have now a new one that definitely benefits a lot of different people, uh, even if you can only save $100 a month or whatever the case may be, but called the um, uh, index uh, index fund. So definitely those four. Um, I would like to say definitely want to know about annuities. Okay. As you uh, dived into that, can you kind of uh, elaborate a little bit more about these four types of insurances? Because I've realized that in today's society, life insurance is very beneficial, but I feel like we don't know the beneficial, uh, the the benefits of it, because especially now with living benefits and especially African-Americans, because back in the day, we could not even get uh, life insurance. Or if we did, it was only for burial insurance. It was just enough so you can burial somebody. But now we have different tools and different avenues that you can do. So really explain about these life insurances that you just went over. OK, so awesome. Um, I'll go for the first one, which is term life. Um, a lot of people are really they have term life. Everyone. If you go nine times out of 10, um, if you go talk to someone, they'll tell, them, they'll tell you they have term life uh, insurance. So what term life actually means is for whatever years that you have bought that term life, so from 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years, 
those are the years that you're covering. Now, this is not good for death. Why? Because say if you outlive all those years, say if you outlive, say if you have a 30 year plan, you outlive that 30 year plan. So guess what? Now you have to go back to the insurance company, take out another policy at a higher rate because one, you're, you're older. Two, chances are, I don't want to say chances are, but say if you got into any type of health issues or anything like that, that's going to uh, affect you. So you have so many different things affecting you to where you're going to get a higher uh, premium on your uh, term and po uh, policy. So that's one thing. The second thing really what term life is for is for living benefits. And when I mean living benefits, how I like to explain it is workman's comp on steroids. <laughs> and, <laughs> I, I, and it's the truth because it covers critical and terminal illness so anything happens to you where you can't work because of critical critical or terminal illness um that will substitute your income and pay off your expenses so it will help you while you're living to pay off your expenses anything happens to you so you won't have going to any financial uh trouble so again those uh, uh those policies are only up to so many years. So you're really taking policies on how many years you think you will work or you take a policy out on how many, uh, say if you have a mortgage, you can take one of out, those out on your mortgages and things like that. Now that's dealing with term. The next thing is universal life. Universal life is permanent coverage. So we're looking at a max of 120 years. Great for anything happens to you, pass on to your kids. That's awesome. It covers long-term care, which is dealing with, you get older, instead of you going to a hospital, you can go and stay in your, or a, a nursing home, you can stay in your home and the doctors come into you and that policy will give you a certain percent out of your death benefit to take care of anything you gotta take care of as far as your health anything so you can get better. Now that's universal. I like to call that a basic life insurance plan that covers death and it helps you as you get older. The next one I love to talk about is the index the index insurance uh the index plan uh, form different companies now all these companies big financial companies they have this plan but they're named differently throughout the companies so this pl this plan is basically an investment plus a life insurance and that's the benefit of actually the for your investment. Now, a lot of people, you might talk to a lot of financial advisors, they're like, oh yeah, you, you shouldn't be paying, um, um, putting your money into an insurance investment. They don't grow and things like that. But here's the thing, insurance investments are the safest investments you, you can possibly get in and they grow on compound interest. Also, they're tax-free when it comes down to your retirement or when you're ready to pull the money out. So that's what's key about this. And, you know, if you got any more questions about, you know, how is it uh, protected as far as in the market, because there's no downfalls in the market, you're invested in the market, but you don't face downfalls, you know, that's huge. That's on the investment side, but we're not even talking about your insurance side for where every time that you make that positive investment towards your uh, monthly investment towards your, your account, your death benefit rises. So you're leaving more money behind for your kids or for your family. You know, and again, insurance is big because it's a foundation. Why would you want to leave your family without a foundation of finance? So the last uh, uh, insurance policy that I love to talk about is whole life. Whole life is the old way of getting money out of your, um, sorry, before I go on, going back, index fund, the, that insurance uh, investment plan, that is permanent life. It lasts over 100, it lasts up to 120 years. That's permanent life also. And it also deals with long-term care or critical or uh, chronic illness. So now, riders. Before I go on to whole life, I would like to talk about riders. When I include riders into these uh, explanations about these policies, you have to understand any other life insurance, and you sit down with them and ask them for these extra riders. There'll be an extra charge, extra twenty-five, thirty dollars for these riders. These riders come with this type of info, this type of products with us. So again, with that, with the whole uh, with the index, you have long term care, which I remind you dealing with as you get older. Instead of the hospital, nursing home, stay in your home. Doctors come in. Also, critical uh, or chronic, meaning anything happened to you as far as chronic illness, 
uh, we have that. So you have those want to choose, but the terminal and critical illness also comes with it. Back going towards the whole life. Whole life is permanent. Um, definitely for burial. Anything happens to you, pass on to your money for your kids. But this is the old way of borrowing money from your insurance policy. Meaning the fact that you can go into this policy, borrow money, uh, do the things you have to do with it. Say if you can't put that money back into that insurance policy, that money will come out of your death benefit when it comes time to pay off your, uh, will give it to your um, your family for a burial and things like that. Um, though that is the old way of borrowing for your um, in your insurance policy. But those are the four ways of, or four ways of the life, uh, four life insurance that we have. And again, we can uh, talk more, say if anyone has any questions, that obviously they can contact you with me, doesn't, you know, doesn't matter. Yes, yes, that's that's beautiful. I think I want to just, uh, this is just going to be uh, just one episode. I definitely want to bring you back to talk about more topics about, uh, you know, life insurance and uh, other aspects. Maybe next time we'll talk about business, uh, business credit or business, uh, whatever the case may be. So, yeah, I definitely want to get into that. So how can the people actually reach you? What are your LinkedIn? What's your uh, everything? We need everything about you so we can uh, get it on the screen. Uh, we can uh, keep in contact with you at all times. Definitely, definitely. My um, Instagram is Lucius, as far as L-U-C-I-O-U-S, zero. And again, that's my uh, Instagram handle. Um, you can reach me at on LinkedIn at Donald Lucius. And again, Donald Lucius, L-U-C-I-O-U-S. Um, we, also, I, we also have a website as far as the um, investment or the um the business side to where you can talk to me about the business as far as um, investments and uh, um, insurance, things like that. But those are the two things, two places you can reach me mostly, uh, Instagram or definitely um, LinkedIn by my name. And again, my uh, Instagram handle. Man, it was a definitely a pleasure. I think we learned a lot. I hope you had your pen and paper out and I hope you was paying attention. If you need to, uh, if you also, if you need to uh, just stop, stop the video and be like, hold on, what did he just say? Let me uh, write that down. I think you should, because this is some valuable information. And like I said, we're going to do a part series about this. We're going to continue to keep on pounding in y'all heads about this financial education because we need more people successful. And I said that I wanted to bring this platform to bring more people on that's going to give us that love that we need, that positive reinforcement and everything else that we need. So yeah, it was it was a pleasure to have you on this podcast today, man. You have a great day. If you have anything else to say, let the people know. No, uh, everything's good. Yeah, you did a marvelous job. Thank you for this interview. Thank you for the invite, man. I love everything. I'm excited for your uh tv series definitely your area you know fully support you um everyone have a good day love peace all right peace and love y'all hi thank you for tuning in that was an episode of power talks da i'm glad that you joined in please spread the word also we have our instagram page that you can comment and say hey I love that cup. I love that topic and I want to uh, discuss it more. Or you can just leave us a DM if you have a commercial or if you want to be interviewed on this show. That is all I have for you today. Y'all have a lovely and blessed week. See you next week. Tune in. Peace and love.